why I just started the recording. Okay. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. This is the meeting of the Historical Commission, April 21st, um, 7 p.m. Um, we have an agenda, if everybody wanted to look at it. Uh, we are not going to be reviewing or considering approving prior minutes. We've actually got quite a lot, so we're going to do them next week. Um, I would like to, at this time, open the public hearing for the application of for the demolition delay at 91 Millville Street. Um, the legal notice, which was posted in the Daily News, Friday, April 9th, Notice is hereby given by the Town of Mendon Historical Commission under the General Bylaws Chapter XX1VA Demolition Delay Bylaw of a public hearing for proposed of a 1900s two-family house located at 91 Millville Street, Mendon, Mass. The property in question is owned by Leslie A. and Craig R. Sr. Burnham. The public hearing is scheduled for April 21st at 7 p.m. and the public comment and um, excuse me and public comment will be permitted it will be held via remote teleconference or as we know in person um, and instructions for public participation will be posted with the meeting agenda on the town's website at mendonmass.gov the calendar so the this is um, this public hearing is now open before we actually invite the applicants to speak, um, I just wanted to read something that we generally um, talk about at the beginning of every demolition delay hearing that we have, and that is um, the purpose of the Mendon Historical Commission demolition delay bylaw is to protect and preserve buildings and structures within Mendon which reflect or constitute distinctive features of the architectural cultural, economic, political, or social history of the town. The intent of the bylaw is not to permanently prevent demolition, but rather to provide an opportunity to develop preservation solutions for properties threatened with demolition. The purpose of this public hearing is to help determine if the demolition of the property located at 91 Millville Road in Mendon would be detrimental to the historical or architectural heritage or resources within the town of Mendon. In considering whether to find a building or structure preferably preserved, the Mendon Historical Commission will weigh the needs and rights of the owner and the specific challenges presented by the property alongside the larger public benefit served by preserving the town's historic character. This hearing allows us to invite informed comments and opinions, those presented here tonight from the property owner, community members, abutting residents, and preservation consultants. Information and comments provided here tonight will help to guide our decision regarding the demolition request for the home located at 91 Millville Road. The Mendon Historical Commission is committed to ensuring that when possible and within reason, every attempt is made to preserve properties that are considered significant in demonstrating the histor historic character of what was once a community strongly rooted in farming and agriculture and the Mendon history. So, having said all that, um, can we invite the applicants and I think Mr. Lapham, um, to uh, speak and present. One point of order. Yes. Um, it is uh, attorney Horn. Uh, because it is partially electronic. Do you have a quorum? We do. Thank you. Yes. I'm I'm back here and Tom and Janice. Yes. I'm on. I'm on. Hello. My name is Fred Lapham. Uh, can everybody hear me? Is this live? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> well, it's uh, it's been uh, a little more than a month since we were in front of you to begin this process, and not a lot has changed. We've done a little more planning. We we've been through the zoning board of appeals, and. Uh, and now we're on, I guess this would be the second uh, leg of your process, which yes. would be the- uh, <laughs> How many legs do we have? <laughs> two. Okay, let's hope so. <laughs> so, 
Uh, I'd just like to go over some of the features of the house that we're talking about, 91 Millville Road. Um, the, uh, the house is located about halfway down Millville Road from where it begins at Route 16 going towards Millville, about halfway down on the right, or it's probably a little easier to uh, have it relative to Pleasant Street, which is right about here. It's about 1,300 feet south of this project. And uh, as you know, the, uh, the Burnhams have a plan to allow uh, for a place for each one of their kids to be able to build a house. And uh, the problem is we have a duplex uh, on the property. And the duplex, uh, this property has been in the Burnham family for over 100 years. And the duplex is where Craig and Leslie uh, got their start. And uh, they lived in the house, uh, did some renovations. This was back in the 80s, I think, right, Craig? Yeah, it was. Uh, they, uh, they put facilities upstairs so that they could have a, a duplex. <clears throat> and that would be one apartment on the second floor and one apartment on the first floor. Uh, and some of those improvements are, uh, you can see here, this is why I mounted the pictures. Uh, on the second floor, they have a front to back. This is the front that would be on this side. Millville Street is here. It's a full front to back dormer that allowed for more space on the second floor. Uh, and you can see that the this rectangle here is the only part of the original house that you see from that side, uh, except for the roof. And here's the, the side of the dormer. You can see it here on this picture. Just gives a little headroom so you have a little more usable space upstairs. Uh, this is the left side of the house. And on the left side of the house, we have a sky on the roof that faces the street. We have a porch that Craig put on, uh, a screen porch here. And uh, as you continue around the corner, looking at the back of the house, you can see here there's an entrance that has been made on the second floor right here. And they put a, a small deck, a landing, really, and a set of stairs going down so you could get access up and down. Uh, I mentioned the bay window. There's a bay window on the front gable on the second floor. And this is uh, pretty dated. Uh, you can see it's one of those uh, sort of colonial looking uh, bay windows on the front on the second floor. Now, those are the structural architectural features that are not consistent with the period that this house was built in. Uh, but uh, as you know, I, I think we brought some of the other aspects of the house out the first time we were with you. Um, and the family put together a pretty good list of the issues that they have in the house. That would be on the second page of that you know. Foundation is a pretty typical stone, field stone foundation. Uh, half of it is uh, vertically, the upper half would be granite slabs, and that would be what you'd see from the outside. This was a type of uh, foundation construction that continued right up into the 1920s, uh, and that's when we started with the concrete foundation. One of the problems with the house, and you get this a lot with field stone foundations, we see it a lot when we redesign a septic system and we have to get into the basement, 
the basement, uh, very often the old houses were too low. The cellar floor is actually below the high water table. So the land uh, here slopes up from, from Millville Street towards the back, going west. And uh, groundwater is, uh, is quite high coming off of this hill. So the high side of this structure would be the back side right here. And that ground keeps going up as you go away from Millville Street to the west. Mm -hmm. And uh, every springtime, they get a flow of water, comes through the rocks in the foundation. The foundation is patched on the outside of it uh, and uh, trying to keep it stable because when you have a constant water flow for periods of months every year, you do get small particles of earth that hold that foundation together, start migrating. So it's important to keep the surface as tight as you can. And they, they've tried to do that through the years. But uh, you can't stop the water. It keeps coming. And uh, you can see we went in the structure, uh, uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago. And you could see on the high side, the back side here, it's all wet on the floor, and it goes towards the street. And as you go towards the street, groundwater drops, and so it's not a problem once you get away from the house. So poorly drained backyard. Uh, I mentioned the hill. That has also uh, effects on the house that are adverse because of the surface water. Uh, and. Uh, they, uh, a lot of the construction took place in the dry season back then. It does now too, but more so back then. And I'm sure a lot of these houses got put in just too low because they didn't have a good handle on how high the water table was. We have uh, problems with the foundation. The windows and doors, they all need to be replaced. Uh, they are in a, a state of very failed condition, not closing properly. Uh, the structure is not weather tight, uh, and it has aluminum siding throughout all around. Uh, in pretty tough shape, you can see. The roof and the trim have to be replaced. You can see here some pretty bad uh, roof damage. Can't see it so well here, but this this kind of condition, it's all pretty much the same age. And uh, the ex existing septic system would need to be replaced. So when you add all this stuff up, and when you realize what the goal is, it, and always has been, is to provide first uh, Craig and Leslie with a place for their house, and now their two kids and their families uh, it just doesn't make sense for this family to put their money into this house. It's too small. And uh, by today's standards, and they would like to, this is what they'd like to do here. And that. was the plan that, that we have in front of you now. So it's a modest proposal. We, we brought this plan out to the ZBA, uh, talking to Craig about what all his options are. This is a subdivision that could be built. He doesn't want to do it. He just wants a place for his kids. And so we got away from that. That's more of an exercise, a theoretical exercise, so he has a comparison and can make an informed decision. Uh, but he just wants to have these two houses, these two lots. Uh, and we feel that the condition of the house uh, would just not, but we don't believe that it is worthy of uh, salvaging. It's uh, in tough shape. 
Um, Fred, did you say it, is it a poured concrete floor uh, with a sump pump or is it dirt? You could probably, it's got some concrete in it, but maybe but you it's could, not no poured, it's pieces done. It's like a wheelbarrow maybe. But the water comes in the back corner, yep. eight inches, goes right through the cellar, up the front, eight inches, moldy. And it's 14 feet from the street. I'm sorry. I said I have two small children. Yeah, well, you wouldn't want. I think just there. just one second. I think I don't want to stop anybody, but I think Dan, if people need to talk, do they need to come to a mic, or can you pick that up? Uh, either mic or speak really loudly. Okay. Just I want to make sure that everybody oh, gets. I'm oh, sorry, I couldn't. <laughs> I know. I know. Thank you, Fred. We, we are trying to, we're on a track trying to get these houses up this winter. We have a situation where Craig Jr., or oh, Craig's not here. Uh, he's a lieutenant in the fire department and he needs to live a certain distance from the station. So that's one of the needs here. And uh, I think uh, we have another town employee uh, I'm sorry, I forgot your first name. John, <laughs> tough one. <laughs> John works for the highway department and uh, is also a, a town employee. Madam Clerk, if I could just add a little bit. Uh, I believe uh, Mr. Laughlin will tell you. I think, am I talking loud enough? Can you? You sleeping? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, <laughs> I think uh, Mr. Levin will tell you that 75% 75, 75 or more of this house is not of the historic period. It's all been redone. Uh, additionally, the house is very close that they stated to the road. There seems to be a misconception that the speed limit there is 25 miles an hour. That's not a properly posted speed limit sign. The speed limit in that area would actually be 40 miles an hour, which is in fact what most people are doing there. And the reason for that is because thickly settled in Massachusetts is defined as houses closer of 200 feet or closer for a distance of at least a quarter of a mile. That does not meet the criteria there. That sign was put there. I happen to know the history. That sign was put there by a selectman many, many years ago because there happened to be a daycare and they were trying to make it safe. However, that 25 mile an hour speed limit is not and anyone that challenges it in court will win. Uh, the definition of thickly settled under Chapter 90, Section 1 is very clear, and it doesn't meet it. And that house is very close to the road, which provides very little reaction time for someone that's doing 40 miles an hour. So, uh, how do I address you, Mr. Horn? Ernie. Attorney Horn. Ernie. <laughs> Ernie. <laughs> Um, do, do you happen to know what the accident rate is down on that particular bend? Um, so I can speak from 30 years. Um, I don't think there's been a lot of accidents in that area. Yeah. Very few. It's got great sight distance until you get up to the Red Barn. A lot of bad accidents in that area. Uh, but it is uh, a, uh, a high-speed area where a lot of traffic enforcement has been done over the years. Yeah. Because they're never uh, traveling at an appropriate speed. And frankly, I can tell you with 30 years of experience there that all, all of us, including myself, rode people at the 25 miles an hour. Yeah. It just never challenged it. Yeah. Uh, the law is, is rather interesting in Massachusetts. The DOT has to sign off on it, has to meet their criteria. The police have to do a certain amount of radar samples that are submitted to the state, and then they look at an average speed. Um, none of those things were ever done there. A selectman, many back, I think it was in 1985 or somewhere right around there, he put it there because there was a daycare, I think it was the Cochran family. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah. a daycare there, and that was kind of a way to handle it. Now, there is a more appropriate sign you can put there, which is the yellow advisory speed signs. Those say, uh, you know, uh, thickly settled, 30 miles an hour, or they can say whatever they want, actually, is if they're yellow and the square with the points up and down. Those are called advisory signs, and a police chief and a highway surveyor can put those in place without the DOT 
uh, approving them, and the police can cite them under seven, uh, 90, I think it's 17 or, or 18, uh, which is greater than reasonable. None of those signs exist there. Um, it's, a, it's a speed area, high, high impact area for traffic enforcement, a lot of traffic coming down that road in the morning towards 16, at night going the other way. But accidents, I, uh, I honestly can't recall hardly any in that straightaway. Thank you. The lawyers are. They love to talk. And they're a bit over I know, sit down. <laughs> I witness accidents there, right in front of my house. And I can tell you, I that I used to live in the building in one of the apartments, and back in there, I drive in the morning. I've almost got hit multiple times trying to leave my house in the morning. Yeah. And they've lost their share of cuts. Yeah, I'm sure. Not, not that you want to hear it, but the average human being it takes 1.6 seconds. If they're a good driver, they're not impaired to make a complex decision. Complex decision of 1.6 seconds is from the time they perceive the danger until their foot actually starts to apply the brake. At 40 miles an hour, you can drive a couple of hundred feet before you actually hit the brake. So that house being so close, pets apparently have been killed there a lot. Kids come out. They don't have the adequate reaction time to stop. So the house is way too close to the road. Asking question now about the house. Yeah. Turn this on so you can hear me. Um, so have the windows, like the windows are not original windows, correct? Correct. I'm just looking at things that are, if any, still historical. There's no, every window's been changed, every door has been changed. Okay. And the chimneys are not original, and certainly the aluminum siding is not original, and the door is not original, and the screen porch is not original. I think it's fair to say that better than 75% of that building is not from the historical period. Mm -hmm. You said the chimney's not original either. No, those have been done since. Uh, and uh, in addition, the interior has been redesigned a great deal with plaster to make it a two-family home, including the, the additional exits out of the building. None of it, for the most part, meets the, the period. Dan? Kathy, just, I know you looked into this, so is this house, sorry, this is weird, I'm hearing myself in delay. Mm -hmm. Was this house originally a two-family, or it sounds like that was done later, too? No. No. Okay. That was done later. So it's not like 77 Park that was always a two-family. Yeah, I believe the, you actually did the construction work to turn it into yes. a two-family. Yes, I did all the work there myself. Years, years ago, what it was was my mother's mother passed away when she was very young, three years old. So her, my grandfather and my mother uh, lived with the butlers in that house. So Isabel and Walter were raising three kids and also raised my mother as their daughter also wow. by keeping them downstairs my mother and father upstairs, grandfather. Wow. You had a butler? Uh -huh. You had a butler? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then we made the apartment upstairs when we right. got married so we could live there. Very neat. When we first got married. So it is a lot of history. <laughs> Yeah. Your well, history. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. So can I ask, I, I don't know if I picked, so is the house vacant right now or you're living in it right now? No, I have two, two men who are living in there, upstairs and down. Oh, so you two tenants in there currently? Right. Okay. Two single male tenants. My son being one of them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Members of the Historical Commission, do we have any other questions? Tom, Janice? I'm good. I've, I, I, I've heard them speak at the uh, ZBA file. So. That's with us. Janice is with us. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> can hear you, Janice, if you just speak. I couldn't understand his question. Do you have any questions or feedback? No, I don't have any questions. Do we have anything else? 
that we wanted to do before we opened it up to the floor? Uh, no, then I don't think close so. with comments or um, we I was I was going to actually open to the floor if there's any other comments, but we do have one email that we received this afternoon. Uh, a letter, as you know, when we do these things has to be sent out to all abutters. Um, we did get one this afternoon from Dan Boucher. Is that how you pronounce his name? Boucher, okay. He said, um, to whom it may concern, as an abutter across the street from the subject property, I do not believe the existing two-family home built in the early 1900s should be considered significant to the historical character of the town of Menden. In my opinion, it has no significant architectural, cultural, economic, political, or social history for the town's interest that the bylaw was written to protect. I'm fine with the structure being torn down. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Daniel Boucher, 90 Millville Road. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much for actually responding. That was great. Um, Lynn, yes. so I'll also confirm nothing else was received via email as of like even now. Yeah, we have had nothing else from anybody else. That was it. And what was the actual year of construction of the house? Because I didn't think it was 1900. So based on the deed search um, that was done, um, it is a circa 1849 house um, tax records. And um, the, the deed search indicate that there was a building there. And when I went down to the vault to compare who is paying taxes and what they were paying taxes on, it did reflect that there was a house, a barn, and one acre of land. And I remember the barn from years and years ago, I think. Wasn't there a barn that? Okay. There was a there was a structure next to the house, right? Yeah. There was a garage. Yeah. Okay. It was, All right. It was about the same setback yeah. as the house, but on the old maps, uh, if we have the house correctly located on the old maps, you can see one of them. I have uh, 1856 map. Yep. And uh, it shows a barn behind the house. Yes. Yep, that's right. But it also shows the house and the barn around the curve going towards Pleasant Street. Now, it's not mapping like we do it today. Yeah, you know? no. <laughs> How but, many uh, rods do you want creative, bet? Though. Uh, uh, I always like looking at that map, and we get a lot of good information on, on it, it, off of it. It today. really is. It's in, yeah. so interesting to compare the maps and the, yep. you know. So that... Uh, we're not certain that the Peter Morris house is this house, for one thing, because of where it's shown on the old map, and it shows the barn behind the house. We have a hill behind the house. Uh, it would be a very strange place to put a barn here. And it does show the hill on this old map. It does. The cross hatching that was used to depict the hill. and. Uh, but certainly, aside from the fact that the location is a little iffy, uh, there's no way we can tell if this was the house that was built back in 1849. Uh, and you can't, like we said, it's so compromised, there's very little of it that is uh, original. Yeah. I mean, nothing certainly that you can see. Um, and Madam Chairman, we would ask, uh, looking at the criteria that you use, uh, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4 uh, in the bylaw, I think at best, um, well, the only one that applies here is 4.1, and I, I think at best maybe 25% of this of 4.1 might apply because, again, this building's so compromised and been changed so many times. Uh, it meets very little of your criteria. so. Obviously, we would respectfully ask you to um, exercise your uh, judgment and uh, not find it of significance. So um, I, I pulled up a little bit of research, and there wasn't a lot to be had. But the lineage. I only have a couple of copies, but it's just. Information about the people who live there. Um, 
So um, Mr. Morris was a, a bootmaker, which would explain his proximity to the boot shop. And Mr. Ferguson was, is, is it Robert Ferguson? Mr. Yeah. Ferguson was yeah. a um, uh, masonry gentleman, which would explain why he would have been in that proximity. So, <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Plus, the Taft kiln was down in that, just beyond, um, it, you know, in the Albeville section, just beyond the house, um, was the Taft kiln where um, Albee Taft, you know, made bricks. Um, the bricks were used to build the um, bank and the um, records room the Adams Inn as well. So um, part of the school is made of bricks. So it was, and Mr. Albee was also in charge of taking care of that. So um, am I saying that right? Yeah. <laughs> Albee Taft, Albee Taft. So, I mean, it, it, there isn't anything particularly striking about this information, only that it gives a little history to why we would consider that particular structure to be part of what was a a larger you know picture in Menden, which was Albeville, um, it you know a, a suburb of Menden. Um, a lot of times, because of the conditions of the roads, people could not make it up to town to go to church and go to school. So we had seven school districts where, because of transportation issues, everybody would take their education away from the center of town. And then if they were lucky enough to get into town for school, uh, for church on Sundays, <laughs> you, know, you were literally taking your life in your own hands. In the case of South Milford, they just, um, which is down at Bates Street, they just created their own church and their own store and their own school. And they were just about ready to break away from Menden, but um, the town was not gonna have any of that. So, um, but I mean, it just, explains the dynamics of why we thought this particular structure serves a, a purpose in defining an area. So you mean serves now or has served? Um has served. I mean I think you know the school is still there. Um it's the other one that's so close to the road you could literally drive right into it. Um so the school is still there. The remnants of the other school are behind the uh -huh. Uh, one of the houses, um, of course, uh, Ellen and Wayne Wagner's house was a, a very uh, prominent boot shop. Um, in fact, they lasted longer than most of the boot shops in town because they were bringing in a, an unusual and probably a higher quality boot to the um, uh, to the market, and and that's why you know it was if they that, stayed. That was about a third of a mile away from this house. This house is 1,300 feet. From that intersection. From that intersection. It's, it's removed from the cluster of houses that you're talking right, about. Right, exactly, exactly. It's, a, it's about halfway down Millville Street. It's about 40% up from the southern boundary of Menden. It's about 40% north into the town. The deed says that it's located in the southern part of Menden. It doesn't mention Alby, Albyville. It's, it's, it's arguable that, that it's not even in that area. And uh, just while you speak to the Wagner property, it is important for us to all remember and also housed a very fine general. Yes, it certainly did. Yeah. And somebody was very passionate about the history of this town. So, I mean, yeah. he's the reason I sit here today. Yeah. Um, he was a great man and a good friend. Yeah. Yeah, an amazing man. Yeah, this community could use him back. And people didn't know that we had the highest ranking adjunct general appointed mm -hmm. by the governor within in our town. Yeah. It's always hard to get him to march in our game Memorial Day Parade. <laughs> Somewhere far away in Boston. Yeah, doing something else. Uh, no, he was a wonderful man. And, you know, they've done they did extraordinary restoration work on their house. They um, but they're up in that district more. This house really is is not in it. And, and again, this house no longer has those characteristics. It's, for all intents and purposes, a modern house, not in particularly good shape, but they, 
They certainly didn't have aluminum siding back then. No, absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think um, part of what we understand as we go along through this process is that not every historic house exists the way it did 200 years ago. Um, modifications are done, you know, um, better insulation, better weatherproofing, better, you know. Um, so it really is, you know, it's the character that is the part that's, you know, is, you know, what you want to try to capture in a community. Like, for example, we lost a lot of character when we lost the Silas Dudley house and the Doggett house and and the Comstock house. That whole center, you I know, disagree. disappeared. This is here today. No, but it and does speak. If you wanted to move it, you're not going to find that. You guys had to seek donations just for plaques. You're not going to find anyone that's going to pay to move that structure anywhere else because it just <laughs> it doesn't have a, it doesn't have it anymore. Yes, and I I certainly stream um, deck on it. Pressure treated wood. No longer historic. It is perhaps an historic piece of land, but you don't have uh, none of us have authority over that piece of land. Only the structures, yeah. and it no longer meets that requirement. Respectfully, that that's you know that's just hey, that's, that's just our opinion. Absolutely, and and I mean I think it's it's good to sit down and talk through these things. You know, there is certainly a very clear understanding that this building is not cutting it. Um, and then from our perspective or the perspective of people, you know, in it, who kind of oversee, you know, historical retention, you know, we've seen houses that are in horrible shape brought back to life, yeah. 34 George Street. Um, so the impossibility isn't always there. It's not always impossible. You have to be passionate about it. You have to have the right person. And you have to have the worth of the period. Yeah. You know, when we look at the house that was moved from the corner of North Ave and Route 16, that had the worth, that had the value. Yeah. It maintained the old historical structure uh, and, and, and of course, that was a monumental job to move that a half, oh, not yeah. even a half mile down the road. I was there. It, we had to close the whole area down for a <laughs> day. Um, but that that building maintained that historical culture and shape. This one doesn't. Yeah. But if I can just add one small thing in there. And it's very hard for us as a commission to get people to understand that we are not Hopkinton. We are not even Hopedale. We don't have these massive, big structures, beautiful homes yeah. that are historic, that people can drive by and say, oh, that's 1830s from Hopedale. Yeah. What we have in Mendon, we are an agricultural town, a little farming town. That's why we have so many problems maintaining and preserving some of these structures. Because if you look at George Street, what a gorgeous little house that was. It was a farmhouse. You know, there was a lot of money that was put into it and it was it was renovated, it was preserved. It's abs but that is who Mendon is. Mendon is a farming community. So we don't feel that it has to be a Comstock house in order to be worthy of being preserved. At the same time, we are not here to try and stop people doing what they want to do with their property. Our ideal goal is to work with people to try and find a really good solution. Yes, this may only be 25% of what it was once, but that is 25% of a potentially 1,859 year house that once this is down, we have no more. So, you know, I, I mean, I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm, we want to work with people to try and find a solution um, to, to keep the character and the look of certain properties. Having said that, if it can't be done, it can't be done. You know, we are not going to waste people's time and waste our time and waste our energy. We don't get paid for doing this. This is just because we believe in this town and we love this town. So, you know, I, I, I just don't want anybody to think here that it has to be 
a colossal big Comstock house or mansion or, or you know, big structure to have any importance in town. It doesn't. Menden's history is as farmers, farmers and boot shops. Um, and so what we want, our, our goal, every time we get one of these um, demolition requests is not to just rubber stamp everything. It's can we just stop? Can we look? Can we see what this can possibly have for Menden? At the same time, working with the owners and understanding and appreciating that as a, a town, the town is only made up of people that live here. You guys live here. Your families live here. You want to carry on living here. So we obviously want to keep working with people to do that. So I don't, I don't want anybody to kind of get the idea that we are this, you know, weird, like little freaky commission that is just out to try and stop every hysterical commission, right? That's what we're called. Thank you. Um, but we, we don't want to try and, and let people think that we're just here to try and, and, you know, stop you doing what you want to do. That is not our job. That is not what we're appointed to do. What we are appointed to do is try and preserve the history of this town whichever way we can, and work with people. I mean, when you're looking at, at tearing this down and building other properties, I, I don't know what style you're looking at. Maybe you could incorporate some of the history of the old house in some of the new ones, like Deb Flanagan did up on North Ave. I mean, that's incredible what people can do. And obviously there are costs involved, but at the same time, you know, it's. I don't think when you buy a house an historic home in Menden, you're buying just a house, you're buying a piece of history. And I think we're caretakers of that history and that's what we feel our job is. So, I mean, definitely we would like to, to work, we would like to do whatever we can, even if it's only for 25% of the house. Having said that, we are reasonable people. Yes. <laughs> Bye, tribe over. So, you're welcome. I, I have a question for the uh, homeowners. I, and again, this kind of goes back to, you know, can something be repurposed, um, which is we're having some success with Misco Springs Bottling Company. That building will be renovated and um, converted into units. And, you know, we've been it's been a very long, difficult process, almost five years. But, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. So I, I don't know if it ever if it ever, you know, came into consideration that perhaps you sell that property. You know, we were talking about... No, 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 no. So I, think, I think you mean the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sell off the building for a profit. You know, let, we'll let the young homeowners who want, you know, a fixer-upper... Well... Let, I finish. Um, there, that's okay. No, I just I want to point out that there are plenty of people out there who cannot afford to be in this community. That what we are doing is knocking down a lot of houses in order to put up McMansions that, you know, are knocking a whole population of people out. So when there's an opportunity, you know, to cut something out and allow someone else to renovate you know, can you reconfigure your lots? Okay, all right. Well, it just, it's something to ask because but it was brought. On that piece of land, and if someone wants to have that house, they can have it uh, if they want to take it somewhere. But you, you made a very good point about people can't afford to live in this town. We've got two people we need to live in this town. Mr. Dudley is on the highway department. We all know that when it starts snowing, and we say we need the trucks out there now. We don't want them coming from Hawkington. Uh, we want Oxford. them to get quick. Oxford. I live in Oxford now. It's a yeah. 20 yeah. minutes for me to get here when it's snowing. And then, of yeah. course, our, our paramedic lieutenant on the fire department. The salaries, they can't afford to live in these towns. I can tell you from my past experience, it was very hard to have police officers and firefighters who could afford to live in this town. So, we're accomplishing, which we explained to the ZBA as well, we're accomplishing an important issue there. And we have looked at that land, trying to figure out if there's a way to work around it. And, and you know, I defer to the expert. Uh, and, and he says, in fact, I think that the way they ended up with this land is that house ends up being in the middle of the tool lots. Yes. 
That's how difficult it is. It's a safety issue with the driveway. So we kept the driveway, the common driveway, right where the existing one is. Yep. And uh, that creates a safer situation. So we, we're going to be able to accomplish two new building lots and not have increased a, a safety factor here at all. Uh, and keep town employees. So, and we, we've seen other so projects. So access road is has to be on that property, on that where the house is located. Well. Are you saying that the access road the has to be right where that house is? It's better. For one reason, it's on the outside of a curve and you have one driveway that will serve both of these lots and it's a driveway that already exists. There's a thing in traffic science, you probably know. I don't know and I'll certainly tell you I do. <laughs> that, uh, it's recognition. People get accustomed to knowing where everything is on their route, whether it's big trees, curbs, yep. houses, driveways, whatever. Sometimes they learn the hard way about the big tree. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so it's a safe layout that we're, we're proposing. But we, we did find other properties in town that uh, were given consideration because of multiple uh, renovations uh, were given a pretty quick uh, process with your board. There was one at 145 Millville Street that is definitely in Al Albyville. Uh, that's located probably half a mile south, uh, right across from, I think it's uh, Tetro's uh, contractor entrance Yeah. down in there. And uh, there's one at, at 39, it's up near Applewood subdivision, 39 uh, Providence Street. That was the house that was taken or it down. It was at 139. Yeah, no, you're right. I think it was 39. And I, that, he didn't even have to do a permit. He didn't have to give you an application for review of historic significance. Right. It, you, that you had house a couple was. Couple meetings, and he had the building down in less than two months. Well, a lot of people do that. Yeah. Um, the property at 145 was in what we would consider horrendous condition. Uh -huh. um, and had been stripped out pretty badly. Um, so, you know, I mean, there were no ceilings. There were, you know, a w incredible water damage on the inside. Um, it would have taken a lot, you know. And we did, ask, you know, in every case we do ask homeowners, you know, is there, you know, is there something, you know, would you consider rehabilitation? You know, because a lot of these buildings see. are structurally sound. Um, but they just, you know, in the right hands, they can be modified to meet contemporary right. challenges. Then my example would be 13 Blackstone Street that was, you know, advertised as a teardown. Well, that was just tragic, but the inside of it is extraordinary. And they retained a lot of the, mm -hmm. you know, uh, characteristics in the building. 39 was a 1905 home mm -hmm. and um you know they were pretty determined that you know there was no way they were gonna you know move it to, and again i mean like lynn said i mean we're not here to make trouble or you know uh you know block people from doing things we just want to explore is there an option you know out there that you haven't maybe considered or you know I think we've and that's everything the two things we know we can't change, we can't move the road and we can't move the water table. No, but um, I might add that, you know, that's, those are resolvable issues. <laughs> Not the road, but the water table, absolutely. You can do French drains, you can do, there, there are alternatives. Where are you gonna put that water? Okay. Can't put it on the road, it's a violation. No, you can't, right. Can't put it on the neighbor's property. If they don't know. <laughs> Oops, I didn't say that. Um, okay, so I, I think if we can um, open the floor, if there's anybody else, if you if you would like to share anything else with us before uh, we close the public hearing and make a vote. No, are we good? Can you can you see if Janice or Tom have anything further? No, they're good. I have nothing to add now. Okay, thanks, Tom. 
Janice, good? Oh, good, yeah. Okay, thanks, Janice. Um, okay, well, I think we've pretty much heard everything that... Um, very much for all the work that you've done. Thank you very much for coming in and explaining your position to us. I think we will take a vote to close the public hearing and then we will have a vote on okay. yeah. what we do from here. So um, I think I need a motion to close the public hearing, don't I? I'll move Tom, to, you want to move? <laughs> I'll move to close the public hearing. Dan did? Okay. I'll second. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Tom. We need to take yeah, a roll call. Yeah, I need to do a roll call. Her. Yeah, Kathy, aye. Janice, what are, what are we doing? Voting on closing. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. Dan, aye. Lynn, aye. Tom, we aye. Had, thanks, Tom. Okay. So I think having heard everything, um, does everybody feel that they're ready to make a vote? Dan, do you feel ready to make to vote on this? Yes. We need a motion to. Um, does any make a motion? So I'll, oh. unless you want to. Okay, say, I'll, want... I'll make a motion to. Uh, uh, how do we want to phrase this? To approve the. Um, or I I want to allow. I, I would have uh, approved the demolition. Let me figure out the proper way to word it. Okay. In the context of the bylaw. I, I, one of my questions is though: is is this the house that Kathy that you researched that is on the map, or is this not the house? So it is. Yeah. So it's it's from it's an antique. It's not 1900 then, right? Right, right. We did establish. I think we all agree that it's 1849. What do you? No, that is the um, that's the brick kiln. This is not ours. This is not ours. No, I, it okay. isn't. It's not labeled as that. Okay. No. I think. Yeah, no, it's not. This document is you're talking. This is Albaville, Albaville. Right. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 This, right. this so, is the the yes. buildings that are significant in Albaville. In Albaville. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, so. Okay. And, it's really hard to hear all those people talking. What What did you say, please? What I said was the document that we've been presented, um, which is uh, history of Albeville com compl compiled in 2021. Uh, there was a little bit of confusion that someone thought that one of the pictures on this document was in fact the Burnham House, mm -hmm. and they just want the record to be clear that it is it's not. not. Right. I think that's yeah. the position of the uh, commission. Yeah. I will make a motion that the commission finds that this structure is not preferably preserved and that the demolition process can proceed. I'll second. Kathy, second. Okay, I need a roll call. Tom, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, ma Madam, Madam uh, Chairman, I think actually, you should, just so we've done it correctly, you need to open it up for if there's any discussion. You've I got did. a motion on the floor, no amongst I, yourselves. I, said, I did ask You're if ready? anybody else had anything else they wanted to add. Okay, okay. Yeah. And well, they didn't. generally, under the rules, someone makes a motion, someone seconds it, and before you take the vote, is it anything else? But well, it, I'll, I'll put out there that I have nothing to add to the motion that's on the floor. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Janice? I don't know if anybody else does, but... Okay. Go ahead. I have nothing to add. Janice has nothing further. I have nothing further. I have nothing further. Okay, so it's carried unanimously that we do not find this preferent. Preferably. Preferably. <laughs> Preferably preserved. I hate your language. <laughs> Preferably <laughs> preserved. Yes. Preservation. Right. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Thank you for coming. Then, we appreciate wait, your time. Two, two things. Yes. The first, I assume the applicant knows this. They still have to go through a, I, a demolition I was just gonna permit. Yeah, I was just going to explain that. And also, um, the historical commission meeting is not quite finished yet. Um, but so, yeah, so you will receive a letter from us saying that um, we will not be enacting the demolition delay. And from there, you will then proceed with the building department in application for your um, permit to actually demolish the house, and it will go forward from there. Okay, the Historical Commission will enter into the record that we have no objection to this house 
being demolished. One thing I would like to ask is, did we do photographs? Did we do what? Did photographs? Oh, no, we haven't done photographs. Okay, so if, if you wouldn't mind allowing us, what we like to do is whenever we have a house that's taken down, um, we like to do, even though 75% of it is an original, we like to keep a photographic record. If we can have access inside, that would be great. If we can't, don't worry about it. As you said, the inside is probably, there's nothing in there anyway. Um, but we would like to arrange a time with you where we can come and actually take photographs outside. We then keep that in our records so that when we do put together um, information on houses that have been demolished in town, we have that record there. Uh, there's no objection to you uh, photographing the outside. The tenants inside, they uh, have indicated that they would like their privacy maintained. Oh, and, and that's fine. We don't have a problem with that. But if we could call you at some point, um, I, I don't know when, but if you could make sure that you let us know a date when you're going to be taking it down so that we can get there beforehand. We've had issues where someone said, yep, of course you can do it. And the next day the house is torn down before we can actually get in to photograph it. So if you could do that, we would, you know, appreciate it. It's just like we said, you know, we can't preserve everything, but if we can at least do it photographically, that would help. Um, so that is the end of the public hearing. That's the end of um, that section of our meeting okay. if yes one other issue um so that the fee for the hearing we're still waiting on the invoice from the newspaper i'm yep. thinking it's gonna be it was just one time i'm hoping it's less than 40 bucks and the post okay yeah it was one that. time in the public in the newspaper so we will be in the letter we'll send you the bill for the um the mailing that it was if that's okay any idea on the timing for that letter oh the letter we can I get to you like with a day Fred, I'll finish it up in the next day or two. Uh, yeah, a day or two. Point. Yeah. I think yeah, we don't sit we on that. That'll come straight out. We haven't seen something fully through the process and viewpoint. I just yep. want to make sure the formatting is correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the, the, the concept of the letter is yeah. get it done. We trust the expertise of Dan. <laughs> <laughs> so do we. <laughs> hasn't, let us, <laughs> hasn't let us down yet. We're hoping it stays that way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you will get a letter. You'll be asked for the fees and everything. And then you will actually work with the planning department, the building oh, department, yeah. and yeah. do your application through that. Um, okay, so you have permission to leave. <laughs> well, actually, no. We should make you stay and just sit I've as punishment. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to be. Tell you want me to stay or you no, you, you, whatever you want to do, Cindy, we're good. No, we're good. Listen, she's, she's $750 an hour. I'm a taxpayer. Cindy? Get her out of here. <laughs> Cindy's worth every penny. As a taxpayer, nice job printing on both sides of the paper. And so did I. But that's all right because we didn't charge anybody. We paid for these ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck Thank with you. everything. Good luck. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And that, that stone building, Misco, is going to happen. Oh, I'm so excited. We hope so. Oh, yeah. No, he. Uh, He's got a, a uh, architect. Great. He's a nice guy. I, I'm pleased he's going to do that. Yeah. He, he has really stuck it out with us. I mean, I he's been in for the long he is, run. He is. I think he's. Yeah. He is. But man, he's. I'm sure he is. And then we'll probably file. You know what he is. Yeah. We need to carry on. Finish that. Yeah. Okay, guys. I'm sorry. I've got to. We've got to continue the meeting. All right. But um. Okay. So to um, to finalize the rest of our meeting, we had under old business that we were going to be continuing the discussion from yesterday on the demo delay and scenic roads bylaw. That actually now, obviously, as we did not, night everyone, as we did not have um, the that on the agenda for yesterday, we are now going to have the demolition delay and scenic by road by scenic roads bylaw discussion next Thursday at 5 p.m. 
And um, select board member Lorne Tinio will be with us at that point too. Uh, I do apologize for it not being on the agenda last night, but obviously as it wasn't, we could not continue the meeting today. So um, was there, did anybody have any other items that, um, we, that came up today that we need to discuss to finalize? No? No. Okay, I think, I think in which case um, I can take a motion to close our meeting. Kathy? Um, I move to close the meeting. Second. Second. Jan is seconded. She beat you, Dan. Right. All in favor? Tom? Aye. Lynn, aye. Dan? Thank you, everybody. Um, I, I, I got you. You made the motion. Okay. <laughs> Put it. Um, so uh, our next meeting.